All right. Well, welcome everyone. Thank you for being here. Happy Friday. Um, for We have some new faces on this call, so I wanted to just kind of remind people of the structure of our wraps. The first half hour is an open session. It's dedicated to the community and our partners to be able to hear some updates, but also bring areas of concerns that they're seeing throughout the east side, um, individuals that they want to bring to our attention. And then the half, the second half of the call is a closed section, closed session for our providers to be able to talk about more specifically, um, get into more detail about the individuals on the east side that need support in what we can do um, in collaboration to get su to support those individuals, get them in shelter, things like that, what, what the appropriate referrals would be. Um, and I also wanna just maybe, don't wanna put people on the spot, but since we have a couple of new faces, if you wanna go ahead and introduce yourself to the group, um, Renee, would you like to start us off? Hi, um, I'm Renee I'm Garcia. I'm here at the Eastside um, Navigation Center uh, for the YMCA um, Family and Youth Services. Um, we have services for transitional age um, youth, uh, ages 18 through 24. So anything from housing navigation to basic needs and education support, job support, and, and so forth. Thank you, and thank you for joining us. And then Glenn on the call. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Glenn Hilton. I am. Uh, I work with PATH. I'm um, acting as the re regional director for Santa Barbara um, in Jonathan's absence while he's on leave. That'll just be for this month, and then I'll be back for a couple of weeks, a little in a few months. All right. Well, thank you, and thank you for joining us today. Um, we also have some, just some general announcements that we wanted to get through really quick uh, before we start our discussion. Next week on the 15th from 3 to 4 p.m., we have our all-call wrap. Um, I will be sending out an email reminder with that agenda as well, but I just wanted to put that on your radar um, for community members and partners to join that the all-call wrap is intended for all of the partners from every region to come together and just hear some general updates regarding um, initiatives around homelessness that are taking place countywide, but then also specific throughout the city of Santa Barbara. Um, so that'll be taking place next week. We also, again, just a reminder, you should have received the email from Landon for our partner survey. Um, Landon, if you wanted to speak to that really quick. Yeah, so um, we're nearing the end of our first uh, three-year strategic plan that SB Act um, helped facilitate in partnership with the City of Santa Barbara around homelessness and housing issues. Um, and so uh, we want to get input about how this process has been so far so that we can evaluate uh, what changes we need to make uh, for future collaboration efforts and, and how that will um, how we can can keep improving what we're doing as a community. So I'm going to put the survey link in the chat window. If you haven't taken it yet, we would love your feedback. And then once we are, you know, sort through that, those responses, we will be presenting that during an all call wrap to all of our partners as well. And then coming up in April for our walkabout, um, we have scheduled it for April 4th between 3 and 4.30 p.m. and it'll be taking place on the waterfront. Um, and we're switching that structure a little bit for this walk. Um, typically we do business outreach and engagement as well as just general outreach for our unhoused folks during our walkabouts. This one is gonna be more of a homeless 101 slash training slash discussion that'll be taking place. So we'll really be looking into our discussing and sharing information regarding the state of homelessness throughout the city of Santa Barbara, um, some of the strategies and initiatives that are taking place, and ultimately how, um, as a community, we can come together to support those initiatives. So I'm really looking forward to that one. Um, I think overall, we've been seeing a lot of successful outcomes from our walks in general um, with engagement with businesses and then being taking what we learned from the walks and having an immediate response to that 
Um, and I know Barbara and Liz can speak to that from the city's perspective, but just overall, um, really positive energy from all of our partners coming together and interacting with one another face-to-face uh, -face instead of a Zoom call. And so just really uh, trying to take that model and now kind of turn it into a larger dialogue with more people throughout our community. So again, that's taking place on April 4th, and I will be sending out that email reminder, save the date as well. So I hope if you haven't attended our walkabouts um, in the past, I really hope that you take that as an opportunity to join us and join in the conversation there. Um, so those are the general updates that we had. Um, I don't know if, or before we get started too, I think just as we prep for this weekend in the storm, that is coming in. Um, just, I know there was a couple of emails kind of just asking questions about the efforts during when it's raining, what outreach providers are doing to let individuals that are unsheltered know about the warming centers or in this case, paths capacity for inclement weather. Um, and just, we do have a couple of providers on the call, so I'll let them speak to it, but just know that there is a lot of effort and communication and um, coordination with making sure that outreach teams are going to places that might be impacted by the flood flash, flash flood warning, um, as well as just general outreach and letting them, letting individuals know of the locations for the warming centers, letting them know that PATH is activated. Um, so I do want to give some of the outreach providers a moment to speak to that. If, Al, you want to go ahead and start. Yes, and good morning, everyone. Yeah, so um, our outreach team, especially with all the rain and everything going on right now, um, we've been making out to the underpasses um, every day just to connect with individuals, um, really, you know, them and let support them, hopefully want to get indoors. Um, I was just going over like the past week and the numbers of kind of been fluctuating um, on the 24th. It looks like under the Milpas underpass in different areas, we had like up to 10 individuals, Cacique and then seven. Um, but then like on the 25th, there was down to like four and two in the areas. But we specifically in the Milpas underpass, Cacique underpass, Quarantina underpass, um, and the Calle Cesar Chavez. So this is, um, we have four case managers that work throughout this area at different times. Um, so like, for example, today, they'll be jumping on at 1130. Um, that'll be as part of the early shift um, flow to be going through there, um, and especially days like today where we want to you know, reach out to them as quickly as possible to let them know about the warming centers and you know, um, the, the path availability for the, the weather beds. Um, so, but it is consistent. Um, like I said, we have multiple teams every day now going through those areas to connect with individuals, which has been right now with the beds that we have at PAP, we have six out of our seven beds at capacity, you know, with that, which we're trying to have that one bed, other bed available for the city, for PD, you know, and for like an emergency type of purpose um, when necessary, you know, to have that flexibility for the community. Um, but it's definitely consistent now and continue reaching out with any concerns when they come up. We do have the nights and weekends, um, but primarily the time available is the early from 11.30 to about, I would say three o'clock, four o'clock, that we still are around the east side of those areas and we can get those concerns before we start shifting over to the, um, the downtown area for the nights and stuff like that. So um, we are available, very flexible but we are in your guys' area for uh, a lot recently. Thank you, Al. Um, and then Anais, I don't know if you can speak to the warming centers. Good morning, everyone. So we are definitely going out into um, our areas and letting people know that we're gonna activate for uh, our warming shelters. The locations in Santa Barbara is the first United Methodist Church, and that's at 305 East Amapa. What is it? Anapamu? Oh, that's a good one. Um, and then in, in CARP, in CARP, it's at the community church, uh, 1111 Vallejo Road. 
Um, uh, when we do activate for all of my teams across the board, we flex our schedule and we change that. So usually we do like eight to four. That's what we like to stick to. Um, but when we activate, I everyone flexes their time, including myself. Um, and we usually work from two to 1030. Um, so at two, we start letting people know, hey, you know, uh, we're going to open our warming shelters. Uh, we offer a lot of transports in those times. So if we need to transport people just a little closer um, to the warming shelter, we'll do that. Hey, I want to hang out here before there. Um, we open at six, so probably five to six is our heaviest transport times. Um, and we transport anywhere from one to 50 people sometimes. It just depends. Sometimes my case managers are just, you know, Everyone come in one car. Um, I have five and seven seaters and we keep those things pretty full. Um, we have um, warming shelters opening in Santa Maria, Lompoc, Santa Barbara and CARP. Um, so we're, we're pretty busy right now. We're pretty slammed. Um, I know that in Lompoc, we've been doing a lot of outreach for the riverbed. Uh, Santa Maria PD is doing uh, helicopter and drone notifications right now in the Santa Maria riverbed. I'm going there after now just to try to get people out of the riverbed, but it's definitely diff difficult. People are, you know, um, have their heels dug in a little bit. Um, but in Santa Barbara, you know, we're we're out there doing doing the work to let people know, hey, come out here, come have some a safe space, a warm space, a good meal, and build community with the people that want to help you. Thank you for that. Um, and I think, you know, with all of the efforts to outreach individuals to make sure that they're aware of these opportunities, you know, sometimes we, staffing just can't get to everyone. And so we are going to see some influx of individuals um, under underpasses just to, you know, protect themselves from the rain um, and the weather and just ask for patience and just know that after the storm passes, the city and outreach teams will continue to go out um, and connect with those individuals under the underpasses and, and you know try to get try to clear the area in terms of just safety for individuals to be able to walk on the sidewalk without having any barriers. Um, so just we ask for your patience during this storm um, through this couple of days and outreach will work, continue to work diligently on the east side to ensure that the underpasses are usable for everyone. Just wanted to update you on the on the mission. Uh, last night we had uh, 78 men and 30 women. So we definitely have some beds for women. We're pretty close to being full for men. Uh, we've been averaging about 82 uh, this last week. Uh, we are open today for um, the weather. Uh, uh, so folks, being able to come in and just uh, chill, watch a movie, get some coffee, get a snack. Um, and that'll be most of the day. Um, yeah, so we do, uh, you know, like I said, we do have some beds beds available um, for folks, so. Uh, Kevin, um, remind me your capacity so we know how many beds are open. So uh, male capacity is 85, female capacity is 40. Okay. Um, what tends to happen is on a daily basis, we're getting people who may leave yesterday, they could come back. So there's some, you know, those numbers, 70, 78 is, it could be 82, right? I mean, we're not sure, uh, because a lot of times people will leave and they'll be able to keep their bed. Um, we try to do our best to, um, you know, sort that out because particularly now we know we need, we need availability. Um, we are just real quickly seeing a lot of people who have not used services in a while coming in. Uh, so we've in the last week, we've had probably four or five people that were here in the past who've come back and then some new folks uh, reaching out to us. So, um, yeah, we wish we could, you know, expand that capacity, but we, we you know, we, we there's only so much we can do. So we're, that's where we're at, we're at right now. Does that answer your question, Liz? Yeah, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Kevin. And I'm. it's exciting to hear that you're able to connect with new individuals that haven't utilized services um, ever. So that's, that's really good. Um, I think before we move into just general concerns and discussion, if 
Liz or Barbara, you want to update the group um, for the labor line? Yep, that is coming up on Thursday. Um, uh, Joelle, remind me of the date that the notice is going to go up. We we're talking about putting it up a few days in advance. Um, Odin, uh, Good Sam, and CityNet have all been going out diligently for several weeks now, uh, reaching out to people. We expect the closure to happen for a minimum two weeks, up to a month. Uh, there'll be some extensive cleaning and some new signage going up to make sure that the labor line is utilized um, for the laborers. Uh, so that will be coming next week. And if there's shift movement changes that we need to be aware of, please let us know so that uh, we can be on, on top of it. Yes, Liz, the signage will go up today, just pending approval from Denny. And the fences will go up at 8 a.m. on Thursday. And if there are any questions, the laborers are still able to seek out work for the day in front of that fenced area. The, the fenced area is to prevent encampments from reoccurring um, at that location, which has pushed the day laborers out of that region. So again, the effort is to um, really return to the intended purpose of the area. And so any, any effort to answer questions or concerns, or I know we have Spanish outreach on Wednesday afternoons to um, let laborers know that this, this really is to, to help them keep the space and, and be able to, to seek that employment during the, during the days. Um, and just again, thank you everyone who's been doing the outreach for folks. I know um, we got some positive responses and, and so hopefully as we get closer, um, there will be other folks that, that might be open to shelter as well. Thank you all. Kevin, yes, that is the little cutout courtyard down the road from you. We have actually seen more folks take advantage of meals from that uh, area recently. Uh, so mostly, uh, and we've had probably in the last week, probably four or five new folks, mostly Hispanic speaking, who have been taking advantage of shelter at night, who are probably part of the labor line. But yeah, so it's, yeah, we've seen a little bit of uptick with that, just FYI. Yeah, I think Odin has previously uh, let us know that some of the people that are staying there are laborers that are also experiencing homelessness. So I'm glad that they're utilizing uh, your, your program. Well, thank you so much for that little update, Kevin. And I mean, big kudos to the outreach teams for making those connections and those referrals and letting them know the resources available. Um, that's, that's really, that's amazing. Um, so I know there's only Tino and Susie right now. Um, if you all had any questions, concerns, anything that you just want to bring to the group at this point, um, yeah, go for it, Tino. Uh, yes, uh, I just wanted to see if anyone knows what is the status of the sit and lie ordinance? Is that being suspended right now because of the storms? And if so, is it still enforceable when the weather clears? Yeah, you know, I can I can respond to that. The sit lie ordinance is is still active. Um, I think some of you are aware that um, we are in litigation. Another hearing is scheduled for later this year. So, um, but still enforceable in the meantime. We do um, we don't enforce that with the level of rigor during inclement weather. We're, we're really again trying to understand and be patient for folks who are seeking refuge. Although outreach teams are in the area regularly, encouraging people to go to the shelter. Um, as well as the warming center. Um, so yes, when the rain passes through, um, actually folks are pretty are pretty good in understanding um, that they cannot be in that area, sit lies enforced in that area. So PD will go through when, when the weather lifts again. So outreach while weather's happening and then PD enforcement when the weather is lifted, yeah. And Barbara, do you know a PD, do they inform people um, where there is shelters and Absolutely. Uh, availability, is that part of their job too? Absolutely. And so PD and Creeks have actually started going out yesterday to let people know in the Creek areas of the concerns and that they should seek shelter. But yes, 
Um, Sergeant Payne and the community action team regularly share. Liz Dots has been giving them updated information about what's available so that they can get the word out. Um, and our downtown ambassadors have that information. Our volunteers in policing have that information. Um, so yes, we at every turn, um, we just simply have folks that seek refuge under the underpasses during inclement weather and then um, move along from that area when, when the weather lifts. So thank you for your patience. And please know that those underpasses are a priority area for us. The sit light ordinance is enforced in those regions um, when, it's, when it's not inclement weather. Thanks, Barbara. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if Susie, you had anything, if not. Yeah, I just wanted to share that um, over the last week or so, we've, we've seen some improvement. Um, I've seen some individuals coming out of path, carrying trash bags and picking up trash. Um, however, earlier, uh, or it was the early part of last week, we had the, I know there was something in the chat about bicycles. Um, we're, we definitely see like the hoarding of bicycles and individuals locking the bicycles up on our fence line. And I've approached a couple individuals last week um, that were obviously trying to cut the bicycle off. So, um, it, you know, there's definitely some funny business going on and um, just wanted to bring that to your all attention. But for the last few I would say this week in particular, we definitely are seeing a difference. So um, I'm not sure what's happening behind the scenes, but whatever we're doing, it seems to be working. So thank you. And I don't know if uh, Shannon or Odin, if you wanted to speak to Natasha's comment and then what Susie is saying, what efforts you all are um, making in response. Um, so, yeah, Natasha's comment about, you know, path related activities, again, just because people are on the sidewalk outside a path does not mean they're receiving services for that. We, we report encampments and the, the city addresses the encampments. Um, and if there are people, I mean, we talk to the people, we've talked to the people with the bikes several times, and if it looks like there's some sort of bicycle repair shop going on. Please call the police. Again, we can't enforce laws on public streets or sidewalks. And our staff cleans the streets three times a day, seven days a week. They do not go out in the rain to clean the streets. So if there's a break, it's because it's raining. But our staff, three times a day, that's... Um, uh, residential coordinators, case managers. I did it myself last Friday. I went outside and cleaned the street. So <laughs> it's definitely a group effort. Thank you, Shannon. Yeah, I'm out there picking up trash myself. So <laughs> yeah. I mean, it you've heard me all say it before. It takes a village. And you know, yeah. when it's working on all cylinders, right, then we see a difference. So um, I, I do appreciate the partnership. I, I think it's the cleanest it's ever looked. I <laughs> will say your efforts combined with, uh, Joelle, can you confirm? I think it's twice a week that we're doing litter removal and power washing in the area too, correct? That is correct. Um, twice a week, I have it on a schedule. Um, they were there yesterday picking up litter and power washing. And in regards to the bikes, don't, you know, Commander Kasapis and his team are very busy. I did post a link please send the link to us and we'll take care of it. What days um, are you power washing and picking up trash on the east side, Joel? I have my team out there on Mondays and Thursdays. Okay, good to know. Um, and I just wanted to add to, we, we have not let up on the region. So this is ongoing, both um, enforcement rise, outreach wise, um, and clean SB wise, um, there are, I will acknowledge just ebbs and flows to the month, Susie, in terms of folks who receive benefits, um, tend to seek, you know, motel or hotel stays earlier in the month, um, have a little bit more resources. So 
I just, I want to acknowledge that through the course of a month, we can see shifts and ebbs and flows as well. So um, I'll take, I'll take any visible progress <laughs> that we can get, but I temper that to say, we're, we're not going to, we're not going to let up. Um, this continues to be a priority region for us. And, and we know that, um, you know, the work that's happening in the labor line will, will create some relocation um, and we'll continue to, to again, prioritize the region as well. Thank you. And then uh, I think really quick, Charlie, there was a just general question about uh, patrol on the east side, if that's something that you want to just update the group on. Yeah, are we talking patrol specific to uh, issues surrounding homelessness and mental health or just general patrol? I think specifically for our unsheltered and I know, you know, sit and lie under the underpasses as well. Yeah, I mean, that the, the entire area remains a focused area for us. Um, so what what it's actually been expanded. So the focus area, our community action team, obviously, on the bicycles, their seven day a week coverage, um, probably multiple runs through that that area in general, a lot of enforcement being done there uh, and also a lot of partnership on the resource side with uh, the collaborative effort. In addition to that, we've also expanded it now to include um, parking enforcement in that focus area, and then also traffic enforcement as well. So it's it's actually expanded over the past, I'd say, four to five months. Uh, and then on top of that, that's that's everything in addition to our regular standard patrols. The other thing that we've done too is also now incorporate those focused areas uh, with our VIP volunteer program. And so, but keep in mind, our volunteers are not an enforcement branch, so they're just out there for what we call felt presence. They're in a police vehicle that has volunteers on the side and the light bar is covered with a, a cover because they can't take enforcement action, but still they're a visible felt presence and they can also radio in to patrol for help if they need help. Thank you for that update. Um, we have met, reached the 30 minute mark, um, but I do wanna just pause and see if there's any last minute comments, questions from anyone in the group really um, before we transition to the second part of the call. Well, all right. Thank you all. Thank you everyone for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you all being here this morning. Stay safe, dry, warm. <laughs>